Good morning, everybody. My name is Mark Solomon, and I'm National Campaign Director for Freedom to Marry. Freedom to Marry is the campaign to win marriage nationwide. Our roadmap to victory is to win more states, end federal marriage discrimination, and grow public support nationwide. Today, Freedom to Marry is proud to launch Mayors for the Freedom to Marry, along with the U.S. Conference of Mayors. The 80-plus mayors who have signed on are Republicans, Independents, and Democrats from America's four largest cities and from Alaska to Florida and many states in between. Each of these mayors has committed himself or herself to the cause and to working with Freedom to Marry to ensure that loving and committed same-sex couples throughout America can marry the person they love and can avail themselves of the crucial protections that their families need and that only come along with marriage. We could not have asked for more esteemed chairs to lead this effort. Each of these amazing mayors has been a passionate, tireless advocate and champion for the freedom to marry and we're grateful for their leadership. I am pleased to introduce a man who's been an amazing leader for the cause of equality in California since his days in the State Assembly. I had the privilege and pleasure of working with the chair of the, one of the chairs in my work in California, and I can tell you there's no more powerful champion than the president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, the mayor of the great city of Los Angeles, Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa. Thank you, Mark, uh, and thanks to all of the mayors uh, who are here, the some 80 mayors from across the nation, uh, Republican, uh, Democrat, Independent. Uh, I couldn't be prouder to be standing here with my colleagues today under the aegis of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Uh, I'd like to recognize uh, the, our fellow chairs uh, for the mayors for the freedom to marry, uh, beginning uh, with uh, the great mayor from Boston, uh, Mayor Menino, who presided over the very first uh, marriages in the nation. An applause is a <laughs> mayor. mayor Jerry Sanders from San Diego, whose courage on speaking out on this issue continues to inspire me and others. Uh, throughout the nation. <laughs> Marinice Parker of Houston, who embodies the leadership and passion that have brought us here today. <laughs> and my good friend, uh, the great mayor of uh, the city of New York, Michael Bloomberg, who's been a stalwart champion of the freedom to marry. I'd also like to acknowledge Marilyn Strickland from Tacoma, Washington, Mayor Bill Finch from Bridgeport, Connecticut, Mayor Pedro Segarra from Hartford, Connecticut, Mayor Joy Cooper from Hallandale Beach, Florida, uh, Mayor Elizabeth Tisdall from Evanston, Illinois, Mayor Jeff Slavin from Somerset, Maryland, Mayor Seti Warren from Newton, uh, Massachusetts, Mayor Paul Soglin from Madison, Wisconsin, Mayor Laura Friedman from Glendale, California, Mayor John Callahan from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, uh, Mayor Sam Adams of Portland, Oregon, and uh, Mayor Craig Cates of Key West, Florida, uh, and uh, the Mayor of Philadelphia, uh, Mayor Michael Nutter, and Rahm Emanuel, the Mayor of Chicago, has also uh, signed on to this, but had to get back uh, for a snowstorm. I'd also like to thank Evan Wolfson, Mark Solomon, and Freedom to Marry, the driving force behind this coalition and the reason uh, we're here today. And lastly, let me acknowledge Tom Cochran uh, and the U.S. Conference of Mayors for partnering with us. You know, I've often said uh, in L.A. that it doesn't matter who your father is. Uh, in my case, uh, it didn't matter that I didn't have one, and hopefully soon, it won't matter if you have two of them. Because if we truly believe in family values, then we should value all our families. 
I've seen the many faces of those who are hurt by DOMA and Proposition 8 in California. They're members of my own family. They're our nation's children who face daily bullying and violence because of who they are or who people think they are. They're the couples whose joyous marriages I've had the honor of presiding over, <coughs> whose special day was shared by friends and family before those rights were stripped away. I'm here today supporting Freedom to Marry with 80 other mayors from 25 different states. Together we will help to highlight the injustice <coughs> and discrimination caused by the denial of marriage. Law-abiding, tax-paying families and their children deserve the same opportunities, the same rights, and the same responsibilities afforded to every other family. And that includes the brave men and women who serve our country in the armed forces. Now, <laughs> now is the time to take action. We hope other mayors will sign the pledge and join mayors for the freedom to marry. The more support we build in our cities and states, the stronger case we can make for extending the freedom to marry to loving couples no matter where they live. Help me in welcoming uh, Mayor Michael Bloomberg from the great city of New York. Antonio, thank you, uh, and good morning to everyone. It is my honor to stand with Mayor Vigorosa and all of the other great mayors from around this country in support of a civil right whose time has certainly come. That civil right is the right to marry. Uh, my fellow mayors understand that welcoming committed gay couples to the rights and responsibility of marriage isn't just the right thing to do, it is also the smart thing to do for the diverse, dynamic, forward-looking cities that we are all working to build. And I encourage more mayors to join us because throughout American history, it has been the cities that have led the march to freedom, and I believe that the cities of America can do that again with marriage equality. For those who say it's just a mountain too high, for those who say keep dreaming, let me just tell you a little bit about what we've accomplished in New York. The idea that gay and lesbian couples would be able to marry was almost unthinkable in New York City just a few years ago. But we made it a reality by bringing together Republicans and Democrats. And that's exactly how it should be, because marriage equality is not a partisan issue. Liberals have always opposed discrimination against group identity. And conservatives have always cherished individual freedoms and strong family values. So marriage equality is consistent with both philosophies. On average in New York City, 700 gay and lesbian couples are now getting married at the city clerk's offices in New York City every month. That means every month, hundreds of more parents and children are gaining the economic stability and protections that come with being a formal family unit. And New York City is gaining as well. Every wedding is a celebration that generates money for our restaurants, banquet halls, <laughs> caterers, and other small businesses. And with many couples and guests traveling to New York City from other states and countries, our hotels and tourist attractions benefit as well. As the mayor of the largest city and the largest state in the union to have guaranteed marriage equality, let me tell you, the freedom to marry has only made New York stronger. Now, New Yorkers, I'm proud to say, have always been at the forefront of movements to tear down barriers and expand opportunity. And so we've taken great pride in being among the first to guarantee marriage equality. But this issue isn't about one state's traditions and values. It's about our country's traditions and values. There is just no basis in our Constitution or in our civil, civic values to exclude one class of couples from a government license. When two people commit their lives to one another, government has no business standing in the way. And more and more people from around the country of all political stripes increasingly believe this to be true. In fact, young people increasingly view marriage equality in much the same way as young people of the 1960s viewed civil rights. Eventually, as happened with civil rights for African Americans, they will be a majority of voters and they will pass laws that reflect their values. So for me, the question is not if marriage equality will come to all 50 states. The only question is when. And with America's mayors standing up for what is right for their cities, 
I believe that day will come sooner than most people think. Thank you. With us is uh, Mayor Jerry Sanders from San Diego, uh, a Republican uh, who believes strongly uh, in freedom to marry. Thank you very much, and I'm proud to be here today to stand with uh, many fellow mayors to announce the creation of this coalition. Uh, some of you may know that I didn't always support the right to marry, uh, but like many people, my position has evolved. Several years ago, I believed that civil unions uh, were fair. The irony is, I held this mistaken view, even though my oldest daughter, Lisa, is a lesbian. But I was wrong. Fairness means people giving people the same rights and freedoms as everybody else. There's no such thing as fair enough. It's either fair or it's not. Today, marriage equality is not something that I just support. It's something that I promote every single day. As I've said, I hope that everyone will find someone they love deeply, someone with who they can share their life's experiences and grow old together. I cannot look anyone in the face and tell them that their relationship is any less meaningful than my marriage to my wife. Seems that each year, more and more Americans are going through the same evolution that I did. I can assure you there's nothing to fear. When I announced my support for gay marriage a few years ago, uh, at the start of my mayoral campaign for the second term, I was expecting a lot of angry phone calls, but very few came. Instead, I heard from so many people, from gay and lesbian couples, from their families and friends, uh, and fair-minded San Diegans who simply said, thank you. We must continue our pursuit of marriage equality until everyone has that legal right to marry the one that they love. The creation of this coalition will send a very strong message to every corner of this country that we, may, we mayors representing cities large and small are deeply committed to this cause. Everyone deserves this right, everyone. So we hope that every city will embrace marriage equality as the mayor of San Diego, I'm proud to say that San Diego does. With us as well is a woman uh, who has signed on uh, to this measure uh, from the great city of Houston, Anise Parker. You know, I'm very happy to be standing here today with so many of my fellow mayors, but I signed on to this fight a very long time ago. Two years ago, when citizens of Houston elected me as mayor, they made me the first gay or lesbian mayor of a major American city. And a lot of folks were surprised, and I don't know whether it was Anise Parker or mayor of Houston, but clearly the citizens of Houston elected me because they believed I was the leader who could make a difference in the city and move our very diverse, cosmopolitan, energetic city into the future. They chose me knowing I was a lesbian. On Monday, my life partner and I celebrated 21 years together. We have a 35-year-old son who was 16 and living on the streets of Houston when he came to our home because he had been thrown out of his family. We have two adopted daughters who are now 16 and 21 that have, we adopted after they spent five years in foster care in the state of Texas with very few prospects of a loving, stable home. We had to navigate the adoption where I adopted in Houston and we had to go to another city in Texas and in a back door of a courthouse for the second parent adoption. We have had to navigate insurance challenges and custody challenges and the school districts. One simple change would have made a tremendous difference in the lives of my family and truly the lives of millions of Americans. 
and that is access to the rights and privileges of marriage. Marriages cement families. Families build neighborhoods. Neighborhoods create, strong neighborhoods create strong communities. Strong communities make strong cities. And cities are the backbone of America. By standing up for the freedom to marry, by standing up for my family, by telling my family and my kids that they are not second-class Americans, we can build a stronger America and a stronger future for all of us. I'm so happy to be standing with all of you, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you. I don't think anybody could have said that more eloquently or poignantly about what it means to be able to love and have a family. Thank you very much. Um, with us as well is uh, the mayor of uh, Boston, uh, Mayor Thomas Menino. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor. Can I say more than the, what the mayor of Houston has just said? Why we're all here? Just think about those three young people, how they gave, she gave them a, a nourishing home and a brighter future. That's the best story we could tell here today. Testimony why this is so important to all of us. And uh, 80 mayors have endorsed the, uh, the concept, and I just want to say that um, when mayors get behind an issue, we can move mountains. And I just say today, I'm here to be part of this very important group. You know, it was nearly eight years ago that my city was the first large city in the country to marry same-sex couples. Back then, it was a huge deal, huge. And Mark was with me on that journey. It wasn't easy. People were protesting everywhere. We're the focus of international news. Well, eight years later, I'm here to tell you that marriage for gay couples has made my city of Boston a much better place to live. <laughs> marriage for our gay and lesbian residents has made their lives and their lives of their families so much better. It says to all of our residents that we're all in this together. We're all going to treat one another with respect, whether black, white, Latino, or Asian, gay or straight. It says that diversity is a gr great strength of our city in the American way. This type of welcoming approach is not only improving life for our residents, it's attracting new ones too. According to a study by the Williams Institute at UCLA, marriage equality has encouraged same-sex couples to move to my city, especially highly educated individuals who are essential to building a strong economy. These tough times, cities and states look to attract talented workers. We wise to enact laws to protect the freedom to marry all their citizens. I personally know many gay and lesbian people living in our city who are actively participate in the civic life of our community, have been able to marry the person with whom they have shared their lives. Some have been waiting for this right for many years, and I remember uh, Mark, when we first had this uh, in Boston, there was a couple of 82 years and 80 years old. They were living together for 40 years, and they wanted to get married. I said, go ahead, do it, pal. Um, that's wonderful. <laughs> but they were so happy that day. They were so happy. Uh, Anna Bissonette and her partner. Yeah. It was just a very special. Unfortunately, folks, you know, we have the right to marry us. Unfortunately, these couples are still being discriminated against by the federal government. The Defense of Marriage Act excludes legally married couples from more than 1,100 federal responsibilities and protections, including Social Security and health care benefits, putting an undue burden on many gay and lesbian constituents. DOMA has a very real impact on the lives of my constituents and all your constituents. It says that some people living in Boston get to have the federal government recognize the marriage. 
or some others, gay and lesbian couples, who are in a legal marriage, do not. That's just wrong. It goes against the basic values of fairness that all of us are here, we stand for. It's wrong for the federal government to discriminate against people of my city because of who they love. All of us mayors here urge our Congress to pass the Respect for Marriage Act, repeal DOMA, to help fully recognize our country's promise of fairness for all. It's the right thing and the American thing to do. As we gather here this morning, a group of mayors who are with us, 80, 80 totally, I ask all the mayors here to talk to your, your congressmen and women. Ask them to sign on. Get a commitment for them. This is a very important issue as we move forward. I've seen how the effect it's had in the city of Boston with the gay and lesbian couples. And the mayor of Houston is the best example, best example we can put out there, how she's given those young men and women opportunities they would not have. So let's all continue to, we see the press conference today, but what we do tomorrow, the next day, the next day, let's continue the momentum. This is a very important issue. It's a social justice issue that we all have to get behind. Thank you very much. From the city of Tacoma, Washington, uh, Mayor Marilyn Strickland. Good morning, everyone. In my state of Washington, we've had an ongoing conversation about gay and lesbians couples' freedom to marry, and we've made great strides. Everything but marriage, however, is anything but equal. As I stand here today, a bill that would extend marriage to the loving, committed lesbian and gay couples of my state is being considered by our state legislature. And from what I hear, we are probably about one vote short in the state Senate of making this a reality. So to all of my senators who are watching, please stand up, please do the right thing, and please pass marriage equality in Washington state. <laughs> now, not all couples want to get married, but two consenting adults in a loving relationship should have the right to be married, regardless of sexual orientation. The denial of marriage withholds not only the personal significance and social recognition that comes with marriage, but it deprives same-sex couples of the critical legal and economic safety that marriage brings. This is about equal protection of the law. This is about civil rights. It's about who we are as a nation and the values that we hold dear. Marriage provides couples with thousands of state and federal protections and responsibilities, including the ability to include a spouse or spouse's children in one's health insurance policy, to share social security benefits, and to file joint tax returns for shared income and property. Unlike civil unions and domestic partnerships, marriage assures the full measure of protection and respect. Again, equal protection of the law. Everyone knows what it means when you tell them that you're married. My husband and I celebrated our first anniversary in December. Being married is fun. It's awesome, and it's something that every American couple should have the chance to do. And no other legal status provides the full range of the tangible protections and intangible benefits that come with it. The denial of marriage is one of the harshest inequalities inflicted upon lesbian and gay Americans and their families. And it is discrimination that is enacted by our own government. We must put an end to this immediately. Diversity is what gives our cities and country strength and power. And it's time that we truly embrace the full diversity of this nation. By signing on to this pledge and standing here before you today, I'm showing my commitment to ensuring that all loving and committed couples can share in the freedom to marry. As the pledge states, I stand for the freedom to marry because it is simply the right thing to do. Marriage is important to gay and lesbian couples as it is to everyone else. Same-sex couples want to get married and make a lifetime commitment and raise families. I am so proud to stand here with my fellow mayors today, the mayors of our nation's great cities, to fight for the civil rights cause. Thank you very much. About at the end of our speaking lineup, uh, next is Mayor Michael Nutter from uh, the great city of Philadelphia. Uh, 
Mr. President and uh, all of our mayors, uh, it's a great honor uh, to be a part of this uh, movement. Uh, for me, it's completely consistent uh, with uh, previous stands that I've taken. I'm the author of uh, Domestic Partnership Benefits for Public Employees uh, in the City of Philadelphia when I was a member of City Council. Uh, we respect everyone's right and everyone's wish, uh, and certainly in the birthplace of freedom, liberty, and democracy in the City of Philadelphia. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania uh, should do the same. I encourage all of our members of Congress to support this great effort. It's the right thing to do. It's the American thing to do. Thank you. Good job. And finally, uh, Tom Cochran with the U.S. Uh, Conference of Mayors. Uh, thank you, Mayor. As as Mayor Bloomberg uh, referenced, the civil rights struggle, the struggle for women's rights, and this struggle. We welcome this coalition, Mr. President, and we thank you so much for this coming together. The, the mayors of the United States, when they do come together, they, can, they have done so much on social and political movements. They do a great job in running cities, they do a great job in transportation, et cetera, et cetera. But there is magic when they come together on a social issue. We saw it on civil rights in the 60s. We saw it on women's rights in the 70s. And in 1984, the United States Conference of Mayors was the first organization of public officials to endorse uh, this situation. We have on, on our, in our policy, I'll read it to you. This is adopted by bipartisan group of mayors we call for recognition and extension of full equal rights to marriages, including family and medical leave, tax equity and insurance and retirement benefits, and oppose the enshrinement of discrimination in federal and state laws. So we're having a press conference today, but the struggle begins and the fight continues. And so we've got to reach out to our Congress people. You've got to work on your governors, the state legislatures. The United States Conference of Mayors is a powerful force. We have great leaders. Mayor Villaraigosa is a great president. Mayor Nutter is coming in. We appreciate you being here, Mayor Bloomberg, and let's continue to struggle because it's the right thing to do. Thank you very much. We do have a plenary, but we'll be more than happy any of the mayors who are, or uh, Mark uh, be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And, and identify yourself. I, I certainly supported gay marriage, and I'd welcome the president doing as much as he can. Uh, I think what you have to understand here is, let me tell you what gay marriage is not about. It is not about what you want to believe or what you think is right or wrong. It's also not about what organized religion should or should not do. Organized religions have a right to set their own policies and procedures and rituals and even pick their own participants. This is a civil rights issue. The key is civil rights. You have a right, I believe, under the Constitution of the United States to have this, get the same treatment that everybody else in this country gets. All citizens are created equal under the Constitution, and every time I've read it, I couldn't find anything that said your orientation should limit what rights you have. I believe you have a right to get a marriage license, regardless of your orientation, regardless of who you live with, who you love, who you want to marry. That's what this is all about, and I would welcome the president to speak out on this. I'd welcome every member of Congress to speak out on this. Uh, I'm happy to say in New York, our senators and most of the congressmen, uh, or many of them, have spoken out already. Well, let me, let, you had a question. Um, yes. Why don't you come over here, Mr. Clinton? The governor signs into law. So, the chances of the referendum in Washington State, I'm wondering what you think the chances are of that referendum of American advocacy succeeding in the referendum. You know, I'm not sure what the chances are of a referendum in polling. Um, support for same sex marriage is actually gaining more support even in the last few years. So, if people decide to do a referendum, they'll have to collect signatures and raise a lot of money. So, it's our hope right now that we have enough votes in the legislature to get this passed without having to have a referendum attached to it. 
You know, I, I think it's, uh, I think it was uh, Mayor Menino that said it's only a matter of time. Uh, the, the fact of the matter, and I, Mayor Bloomberg as well, uh, the fact of the matter, I remember 1998 uh, on my second try, uh, I passed uh, seminal legislation in California uh, banning discrimination against gays and lesbians uh, in employment and housing. Uh, people said it would, it, they had worked on it for 20 years. Uh, we then did domestic partnership benefits. We then did anti-discrimination uh, initiatives. Uh, and now we're here today. 80 mayors from 25 states from around the nation. Uh, it's just a matter of time. You saw the recent polling where 53% of Americans are saying yes. Yes, we ought to have uh, the basic liberty, the freedom to marry. Uh, this shouldn't be controversial. And as uh, Mayor Bloomberg said, this isn't about uh, religion. Uh, this is about the right thing to do. Uh, it's uh, something we believe in uh, deeply, and it's why we're here. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I, I know that um, uh, Governor Romney, during his gubernatorial years, uh, wasn't a uh, champion of uh, same-sex marriage. I, I don't believe that. And um, you know, I, I think as we gather here today, and uh, somebody talked about referendums. You know, I don't think you know, I'm not a big fan of referendums. They elect us to make decisions, elected officials. When you give up the right to make your decision, and you know, then the powerful interest will spend millions of dollars to defeat a uh, referendum issue. We as elected officials stand in here, 80 of us, and a lot more after us too, that uh, as we go back to our, our cities and talk to our congressmen and women and tell them why we're for it. I think that's the most powerful thing we could do over the next uh, several weeks. Uh, we have the ability, mayors can make a difference. We did it with a cops bill a few years ago when people said we couldn't get it done. This is a civil rights issue this year, and I think we have to get it done. I think uh, Romney, you know, he's uh, someplace over on the right-hand side. I can't figure where, but he's there. Um, uh, but I just say to you that um, as mayor of the city of Boston, we were the first to do it, uh, and we had some issues, but we got it done, and the legislature worked on it. I mean, the legislature in Massachusetts passed it. And so I just say that uh, I'm not getting involved in the, the presidential elections at this time, even though I'm a Democrat and I think Obama's done a great job. Um, but, <laughs> but I just say to you, uh, you, you want me to get in the middle of this, huh? <laughs> and, and pal, I've been long as me. I'm not getting involved in this at all, pal. I don't have the headlines tomorrow. My Menino says Obama says, you know, <laughs> see you later. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody.